Altona is a new company. It's formed from the merger of two Australian companies, Universal Resources and Vulcan Resources. It was formed during the, uh, the darkest days of the uh, global financial crisis in, uh, uh, with the strategy of giving investors exposure to copper, large-scale exposure to copper. I think the next interesting thing for the company is in, in Australia at the uh, Roseby project, it's an enormous project that's some 900,000 tonnes of contained copper metal. If it was a gold deposit, it would be 5 million ounces. What we're doing in Roseby is we are transforming that project. It's already had a bankable study, and we're trying to take it to a higher level to become something much more substantial. We are drilling. Our partner on part of the project is Extrata, major international mining company, and they are drilling. So there's going to be a lot of interesting news flow in this next few months. Well, we all use it. Copper is everywhere. It's in your fridge, your car, your mobile phone. Copper is essentially a proxy for world industrial production, and copper demand has been going growing very, very strongly, not just uh, from China, as with most metals, but also in, here in Europe. The world's biggest copper business is in Hamburg. Orubus used to be called Norddeutsche Finerie, big smelter. And their demand is climbing for, as, in, as demand from Europe climbs. The flip side of that is uh, where does the copper come from? Unlike other metals, copper mines, we're just not finding enough. I think Robert Friedland recently said that in the next 10, 20 years, we need to find as much copper as we ha the world has produced and consumed since inception. The demand for copper is huge and we're just not getting enough new mines on stream. We probably won't, so the price will go up. If you already have a large mine, you know that the earth's processes have worked in a way that can produce large mines. So first thing you do is look in the shadow of the head frame. You use various techniques. Uh, you can actually look through the earth. The metals that we're looking for, if you can imagine copper, it conducts electricity. So you can actually put wires and electricity into the ground and if there's a lot of copper there, it actually acts like a little battery and we can detect that. So there's a lot of sophisticated modern technologies that you can use to look through the ground. Once you get a clue that there might be something there, then the only one way, called the truth machine, a drill rig, actually put a core sample down there to see what you can see and find out if your ideas are correct. There are many, many other techniques, but uh, uh, the world, the computing power that we have now that allows us to process some of this information, allows us to generate wonderful images of what might be happening down in the earth. In Finland, the relationship with the government is fantastic. Very different from most countries. The royalty rate on mining production is zero. The government helps and assists with training of workers. But more importantly, the government is a shareholder in my company through the uh, Venture Capital Fund. They give me grants, free money. Uh, we already have received one. We've applied for another. That might end up being 4 million euro or more. And also the Finnish government agency Finvera may participate in debt finance, either by guaranteeing debt or providing cheap finance. You just don't get that anywhere else. It's a very positive place to, uh, uh, to do business. And it was ranked, I think, in a recent uh, survey as the uh, second best regime in the world for mining. And also recently Newsweek uh, voted it the best country in the world. How one engages communities is just by letting them understand what you do. In Finland, we've been talking to the local communities from the municipal uh, mayor, leading figures in the communities, open days, by being transparent and just telling them what you do. I think knowledge is everything. The more secretive you are, the more resentful you get people. The other thing, uh, in Finland, the uh, community is, uh, it understands mining. There's a long mining tradition. Similarly, in Australia, in remote Australia, it's a little bit different. They're not big communities. The main issue there are Aboriginal communities. And we already have an agreement with the local Aboriginal community in, uh, uh, in Australia, the Kalkadun people, where we'll be funding activities within the community. So engagement is how it keeps communities happy.
protecting the environment is a fundamental part of a mining company's business. You should never see it as an impost. Simply, our view has always been the regulations in a particular country don't matter. What matters is it's part of you buying a license to do business, so you follow world's best practice and you try and anticipate. You engage the community, make sure they understand, and you try to have the minimal impact. Well, between our two projects, in Finland, we, we start as a relatively modest project, probably equivalent to something like a 70, 80,000 ounce gold mine with a nine year life. We have a plan to grow that to something significantly larger. In Australia, if we can get our project into production over this next few years, 40,000 tonnes of copper, that combined production profile is the sort of uh, uh, production profile of a company that would have a market capitalization of one and a half or two billion dollars. So our goal is, as we set our strategy a year or two ago in the bottom of the global financial crisis, to become a mid-tier copper player. We may get there. We'll be working hard to try. We're in a mining boom. People are scarce and getting good people is uh, the key. The asset in the ground is the asset in the ground and uh, you know you're not going to get it perfectly right. How well you do depends on people. In Finland we have all our key managers in place. That's not an easy task. We've been working on that for some time. And also on my board, I have a very experienced board with people who've been in the mining industry for a long time. So we have a team of around 20 people now and as we move into production that will grow to probably 150 people. I'm a geologist. I love rocks. One of the wonderful things about being in the mining business is you hear many people talk about discovery. What the word discovery means is before it happened you didn't know. So it's an adventure. It's an adventure in space and time. Our rocks are up to 2.7 billion years old. So you're trying to work out what Mother Nature did 2.7 billion years ago. It's absolutely fascinating. And it's just fortunate that what we're some of those things that happened 2.7 billion years ago produced things that we think are valuable. So it's, it's a wonderful business. It involves very high-tech activity, but also very simple things. Mining is just smashing up rocks and extracting what you think is valuable. So it's a great business. And uh, mining people are the same the world over. Uh, they love it. They love rocks.